are on. Time is yours. Go ahead. Thank you. The leadership competency I chose to talk about was the communication of the vision or vision communication. And the reason I chose it um, was that it's always been a part of um, my job that I felt I didn't do well. And so I, I kind of wanted to do some additional research and figure out whether there were some things I could learn or if what my belief was is that that inspirational communication was an innate thing, not something that could be learned. And what I found um, from this class and from this research is that um, inspirational speech itself can be taught, but it's a pretty difficult thing to pull off without some extra skill sets. But what you can do is inspire others through your actions and your decisions and your consistency in how you deal with them and your respect for others and whether your values come through how you treat people each day. And through that, you can, even in smaller sections of, of vision communication, say you're just a project leader, or you just have a solution you want to present to your boss, Andrew, that's different from the path that he was going on. And you want to try to communicate to him the reason for that. You want to show him that somehow this is going to be a better solution down the road. And you need to communicate that to him. You don't have to be inspirational to do that. You know, do you kind of go through those phases of persuasion uh, and influence? I could always persuade and influence people. I was in sales. You, you do those types of things. But to actually inspire people to an emotional reaction or connection is very difficult. Um, but your hard work is going to, you're going to build confidence. And he's going to have confidence in you and your abilities. And at some point, you're going to establish trust to where he's going to actually trust your input in relation to those issues. And in that way, you are, in a sense, communicating and inspiring people to action, not just influencing. So one of the, the greatest and most inspirational speakers of all time is this man. And what he had to say, and what we learned in some of our readings and how calculated it was, but what he had to say inspired millions of people to do something to change the way our country treated people. And it also inspired a lot of us, and still today inspires a lot of people to act in certain ways through his inspirational speech. But he really isn't able to achieve the ultimate goal of his vision without being here, without being able to model and act and show us how to get there. So really, what he did was created his dream. He didn't create for us. Oops, sorry. He didn't create for us a plan on how to get there. He's articulated the dream. But Simon Sinek, who, he's an author, a business author. Martin Luther King didn't say, I have a plan. He said, I have a dream. So he inspired people to a certain path, but he didn't necessarily give them the way to get there. And what we see, because of that, is some hiccups in that path. We see some difficulties and some co-opting of his, of his vision and his idea by others because he's no longer here to make sure that that happens by modeling that behavior. So in my research, I, I discovered that one of the ways to, to create uh, inspirational connections with people in speech um, is to begin with why. And again, Simon Sinek talks about this, and he calls it the golden circle, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he talks about uh, what and how and why, okay? And if you begin with why, in how you address and create your vision, and how you communicate your vision, rather than what you do or how you do it, you're gonna be able to connect with people in a much better way. Um, so within that, you need to tell a story. And that story needs to be compelling in how does it address why? Why does the company exist? Why, are we, why is this important that we, that we achieve this? Why is it important that you be part of this achievement? Why is it uh, necessary that we go this way? Um, these are all questions that people need to have. And if you begin with why and tell that story, that way, you, you can create some connection. I think somebody's calling in. <laughs> Hello, Greg. Hey, Tom. How are you? Excellent, thanks. You? Great. 
hey, if you could bear with me for three seconds, three minutes actually, okay? okay? Thanks. Uh, do you want to call me back? Um, yeah, why don't I do that? You'll be available. Okay. All right, great. I'll be, I'll be online. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. So the other key to that is, is by retelling that story over and over, it's focusing on why. You get to build a relationship. That relationship can build into a group of believers who believe what you're communicating because you've started with the whys, why it's important to them to be part of it. And by making that connection, retelling that story, those, those relationships build into a coalition of people who are going to be behind you for that change whatever, or whatever you're trying to initiate, which then that's by retelling that story over and over again, you get to have them be believers. You then have to live it. You can't just speak it. Again, we're going back to this modeling. You need to be connected. You need to be making all of your actions, your decisions, how you treat people parallel the vision you've been communicating. So you've got to live that. And if you do that, you will establish trust. And when you have trust and you both understand that you're in it for each other, then that becomes very powerful. There's a lot of things you can do from there. So this vision, we've established this. We've got the whole why thing going. It, it ties back into our values. We all understand it. We believe the same things. Really important. Now the purpose of why we're doing this, this mission beyond here, these three things need to connect. If they don't connect, people will see the discrepancy in it, and they'll defect. They won't be part of this anymore. So not only is it important to model the behavior, communicate the behavior, these three things need to be cohesive and connected with what you've been communicating. Make sense? Good head bobs. So that trust leads to understanding the values, the, the vision, the mission being connected, right? You living and modeling that behavior that, in a sense, is you being passionate for what you believe in. That passion connects to the purpose. And then you're, then the people who are there to follow you. I know that when, when I'm looking to follow someone, to be part of the organization, I need to believe in what they want, what they believe in. I need to see a leader who's passionate about what he's doing. If he's not passionate about it, he's more than likely not connected to it. And if he doesn't believe it, then why should I follow them? There must be something wrong with the message that they're trying to tell, or the vision that they're trying to accomplish. So it's really important to connect this, follow, be passionate with whatever you're doing. Greg, who we'll have back here in three and a half minutes, is the former president and CEO of Maker Media, and as you know from the, the chapter I sent you, he's the author, co-author of a book called Collective Genius, The Art and Practice of Leading Innovation. And he's going to talk about some of the principles that they've discovered in this group of people um, in, in what it takes to lead innovation in a company. And there, if you'll notice from his chapter and his story, which is the one uh, I sent around, I think that, that one of the lessons from it is that even in the mundane, it's a pretty boring story. <laughs> it's a pretty boring story out of the stories that are in the book. And he admits it too. He goes, well, that's like the worst story. I said, that's okay. It's your story, you know. Um, what they had to accomplish was very difficult. But the keys to it were really that they, they all were committed to and shared the same beliefs. They all wanted to accomplish the same things. And they were able to then work as a team within that. Uh, and they understood and were part of the vision of the of the, uh, the company. So I think that's where the real power and the connection comes here. Um, he was uh, executive vice president of technology at Pixar, and uh, that's where that story uh, resonated. So I'm going to get Greg back on the line, and we'll let him kind of run some, through some stuff. And it, it'll be open for Q&A then, too. Okay?
Greg, I just got done introducing you so that it's all yours. And I think you'll be on the screen here.